All right, today I wanted to do a uh, review flip through of this new issue of Men's Adventure Quarterly, number 10, the Vietnam issue, co edited by Robert Dice and Bill Cunningham. I'm going to do this in two parts. Uh, the first part is the review, the second part, we're going to flip it, flip it around, flip the camera around because there's lots of uh, art and uh, pictures and stuff. That, so we just kind of flip through so you can check it out. Um, this magazine is available at menspultmags.com along with some other places like Amazon and stuff. And I'll put a link down at the bottom in the description. Uh, if you get it at menspultmags.com, you are directly supporting the people who put it out. And it's cheaper for you. And it's just beneficial for everyone in our little community that likes this stuff to help keep it going to where more money goes to them. Amazon has plenty of money, so if you can, order it directly from menspultmags.com. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is issue number 10, the Vietnam issue. It just came out. Uh, it's a hard-hitting time capsule of vintage fiction, nonfiction, art, attitude from the era of Vietnam. The Nam, as they say. Um, besides, besides the introductions, uh, comments for context and um, a few articles that were related to the subject. Everything is originally printed in Men's Adventure magazines. If you aren't aware of Men's Adventure magazines was uh, magazines targeted towards men. Uh, they're mostly adventure uh, from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, but this obviously doesn't have anything from the era of the 50s because it's the Vietnam War and hadn't really kicked in yet. So I was born in 1977, and, um, you know, as I was growing up, the culture was kind of obsessed with the 60s, uh, and then it really culminated in the 90s. There was just tons of movies, and it was just everywhere, I, you know. But everything, you know, and my parents never went, they weren't in, in Vietnam. Um, my dad was too young. I, I didn't really have any family that went, and... You know, no one protested. I, I don't have any direct relation to the Vietnam War to really comment on it. You know, like, I, all I know is, like, Forrest Gump. Like, you know, what the hell do I know about it? So there won't be any of that, really, in case you're worried. <laughs> the Internet has enough opinions. So... Most of the stuff that I've read that Robert Dice has had a hand in, uh, the collections of vintage uh, men's adventure fiction, is really um, exploitive. It's really, uh, really fantastical fiction um, that kind of blurred the lines with the real world and just completely outlandish, untrue stuff. But I think when it comes to something that's real, like the Vietnam War, um, they put a little more effort into what they were putting out. And the first piece of fiction in this it's called uh, The First GIs to Die in Vietnam. It was originally printed in Man's Magazine in January of 1963. And it's essentially, it's a true story. It's fictionalized, but it's a true story. And it's not really embellished. And it's about four soldiers who were taken prison, prisoner by the Viet Cong. And two were executed and um, two make it out. And uh, in the article, there's real pictures of the people, uh, news articles. And, and afterwards, um, Robert Dice does a afterward, because it's, you know, reprinted from, what year, 1963. So all this time has passed, so there's more information. So he just kind of catches you up, which was really cool, uh, really interesting. About some of the facts behind what went on and you know when I was going into this I'm, I'm used to the the schlocky the silly men's adventure stuff 
And I guess I kind of had this preconception that that's what this was all going to be. And this first story just kind of took me by surprise and just, I don't know, it really got to me. And I had to like sit it down for the night and just be like, you know, this is real. This is real stuff. This is going to be a little more serious than I'm used to. And I usually try to avoid the real world. And, and you know, I'm not a fan of true crime or anything. Real stories, like made up stuff, especially ridiculous stuff. So this was real. And I don't know, it was a interesting perspective from, because a lot of the writers were actually there. So it was very real. It was a very real issue of Men's Adventure Quarterly. I kind of got the impression that they started off this, the magazine with this very serious story to show, to kind of honor the actual soldiers that were there. The people that were there that fought, died, and got through it and survived and dealt with all this shit when they came back. That I, I think that they didn't so there is there is very schlocky stories in here, like you would expect. But I think the reason they started off with a a real one, a serious one, is to honor, you know, honor this memory that it's not it's not just a, a joke. It's not just joke time. It's not just dismissive. Uh, you know, they can't start off with the uh, the saga of Mad Mike Kovacs and his battling lepers of Vietnam, which is in here and is awesome. Because they would just be making too light of it. So they wanted to show, I'm guessing, that they wanted to show that this is a serious thing. Yeah, we're going to have some fun in here, but here's the reality of it. Which I thought was a real classy thing to do. Like, after I stopped and thought about it, I was like, you know, I thought it was a wise choice to do this and not just start clowning around. So, yeah, once again, like, the magazine is filled with beautiful artwork. Uh, Bill Cunningham did all the, the graphic layout, and it's amazing looking. Uh, it's just real eye candy. And, you know, they got the artwork, the uh, original, sometimes the original paintings, uh, scans of the original magazines. Um, so yeah, there is like a couple of schlocky stories and then there's some more serious stories and the, and the writing is actually like, is good. It's not, there's nothing in it that's really corny. Well, maybe a couple. <laughs> Uh, like I said, the, the leper story is really, really funny. And there's one with uh, this, like, prostitute. And I don't know, this guy, it's super, super soldier. gets revenge to this Vietnamese communist sympathizing prostitute that kills his brother or something. It's, it's crazy. So, yeah, there is stuff like that. You know, there's uh, scantily clad ladies in distress and... There's all the things that you want there to be in there, but I, I guess I just wanted to say that it is a little more serious than they usually usually are. Some of the fiction is by well-known authors in the in the Vietnam War genre, uh, like Glenn Enfield and Robert F. Doerr, who was a pilot. And there's a really great uh, not airplane. <laughs> what are they? What are they called? Jets back then? I don't. I don't know. Planes, jet airplane fighting in the sky. MiGs, right? The Russian MiGs. You know, like Iron Eagle, stuff like that. Uh, there's a really great story like that. And there's another one about tunnels. Oh my God. That would just total nightmare city. That's just so terrifying. Uh, there's a story by Mario Puzo, Puzo, the author of The Godfather. He used to write for a lot of men's adventure magazines. And then there's some articles. Uh, there's an article about Barry Sadler, creator of Casca, the Bout of the Green Berets guy, which, like, I sold records for a couple of years, and I would get that record and just throw it in the dollar bin, be like, whatever, I don't know what this is. And I was, like, totally blown away when Paperback Warrior did that episode where they were talking about him. That was a call. Oh man, that guy like made Casca and like did all this stuff. 
and there is just this tumultuous story, like his history and man, it was yeah. There's some messed up stuff in there. Is a definitely a must must read, and it's real. And I just complain that I don't like real things, but eh, whatever. There is an article at the end about how uh, when the soldiers came back, the government was dismissive, uh, kind of threw them away, just like, hey, thanks, whatever. Good luck, guys. And then the communities, like the people who own businesses, didn't want to hire them because there's a stigma that the soldiers were, Vietnam you know, soldiers were crazy. And of course, there was the anti war protesters who would take it out on the soldiers, which is so backwards, uh, you know, especially because there was a draft. Like, I don't know. That, that, so that part, yeah, it was, that, I guess that's as close as I'm going to come to political opinion. It was like, hey, if you're going to do it, do it to the right people. If you're going to say something, you got to say it to the right person, not to the poor bastard who was, who was there, who got, who got sent there. More fun stuff. Uh, there's a gallery of Raquel Welch. <laughs> she went over with Bob Hope to entertain the troops, and there's like a photo gallery of Raquel Welch, Welch which is wonderful. There is a, this is one of my favorites, was a piece by Paul Bishop uh, about Vietnam paperback fiction. Which is its own little subgenre, 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 and he just like breaks it down and tells you all the titles and like just total resource that I'm always looking for. So I really enjoyed that. And then there is a short piece about um, Nicholas Kane, the author of Saigon Commandos. They made into a movie, and it's his. Um, his experience with them making this movie of his book. And it's kind of funny. So, you know, all in all, I mean, it was, it was very enjoyable and actually kind of felt something, which is funny for me because I usually read like ridiculous stuff. So it gave me feelings. Uh, you know, you feel for those, for those guys, and it's a lot easier to take a look back on it and the the loss of them as human beings was very uh prevalent uh, they just kind of discarded as trash by everyone and i think that that really came through in this magazine was that these weren't like that they were, they were showing respect to brothers, dads, uncles, the human being aspect, the neighbors, that these were real people. This is what, this is kind of what happened. This is the era of uh, Vietnam and what it was like. And uh, I thought they did it with class. It was non political, it was a pro, it was an anti. I just wanted to show the human beings that were behind the uniforms. And that's kind of what I got from it. Uh, so yeah, another wonderful output. And now let's flip it around. Oh man, it's already a long video. We'll flip it around so we can show uh, some of the some of the artwork and stuff. All right, here we go. So there's the cover. Wonderful. That's Steve Island, the the model. So basically, we're just gonna kind of look at the uh, the images. Just enjoy the pictures. First time I tried to record this, it was super crooked and it drove me nuts. Excellent, excellent cover art from Man's Magazine. This is where the has the first GIs to die in Vietnam. And here's the uh, the article and the, the two guys that uh, were executed. See, I love the way he lays this out. How he cuts the art into the into the text. It's really good. And 
And then uh, here's the afterward where he talks about what happens, what actually, what they know now. Very sad. Some more cover art. Mario Puzo, or maybe that's Mario. Godfather, oh, look at this Mort, Mort Kunstler artwork here. See, I told you, They'd, you knew they were gonna slip some scantily clad ladies in there. Let's see. Oh, this was a um, little article by Bill Cunningham about uh, comics that the military used for training purposes. And they would like draw these sexy ladies uh, to kind of like remind guys to, you know, keep your gun clean and working. It's yeah, good. Smart thinking. Some more great covers. got some original uh, advertisements and cartoons. There's Barry. Here's Barry Sadler. Look at that layout. That's great. Casca. Here, look, they used uh, Barry Sadler's grizzled old face for the first cover of Casca. It's pretty good. I mean, he looks like he, looks like he would be on the cover of a gnarly old paperback. Uh, here's the advertisements. Uh, Art of Ron Lester. It's another one of one of their books. Um, Bob and Bill's books. Advertisement for the Pulp Fest coming up. This is in Pennsylvania, which is like four hours from me. Uh, I've never been. I was thinking about going this year. Uh, we almost went last year, but it was a tight time for money, so we just couldn't couldn't pull it off. But I was definitely thinking about going this year. This artwork's amazing. And everything's credited. Uh, the artwork when when they could when they could find it. Who did it anyway? Um, I can't read it upside down, so I can't tell you at the moment. But you can look when you buy the magazine yourself. Here's the article uh, by Paul Bishop about the Vietnam paperback. Paperback books. Saigon Commandos. And then here's uh, Nicholas Kane's article about the movie. Saigon Commandos. PJ Souls. Uh, she was in uh, Rock and Roll High School for all you Ramones people. Or Halloween for the slasher slasher folks out there. Mads magazine. Here is Robert F. Dorr. See? Pilot. This is the uh, MIG story I was talking about. Trying to speak about. Coming soon, The Art of Ron Lesser, Volume 2. Uh, it's about Steve Holland, the uh, the model. There's his face everywhere. He's on the cover of lots of paperbacks and men's adventure from the era. Well-used model. Women in Peril. Here's the tunnel story. Yeah, it's absolutely terrifying. Oh, 
It's getting hard to turn this. Oh, here's Raquel Welch. With the knitted, knitted skirt, knit, knitted dress, I guess. She was gorgeous. Iconic picture there. Looks like she's go-go dancing. Her and Bob Hope. Some more pictures. <laughs> we got the centerfold. Yeah, another great issue. If you're still watching? Go order it at menspulpmax.com. That one too. I did a review of this Atomic Werewolves and Man Eating Plants collection for the Men's Adventure Library Journal series. No, just the Men's Adventure Library. It's a little. It gets a little confusing. That's it.